Hi, this is Tony Kovach at Liberty Bellows in Philadelphia. I want to welcome you back to our series of instructional videos for the piano accordion. In previous lessons, we were playing melodies that used our five finger closed position. Today we're going to talk about ways to move beyond the five finger position and extend further up the keyboard. But first we're going to do a short warm up where I'm going to show you two ways that we can move outside of our five finger position. The first thing we want to do is find all of the C's on our keyboard. So like we talked about in the past, we find our two black keys and our C is right beneath it. We find two black keys, here's another C, and our other C is up here at the top of the keyboard. The interval between two C's on the keyboard is called an octave. So here we have an octave between this C and this C. You can use your thumb to play the lower C and your pinky to play the higher C. Let's practice playing that octave up and down. Let's try playing our lower octave. Find your low C. If we connect the two C's in the octave by playing all of the notes in between, that's called a C major scale. In the C major scale, every key has a different letter name. We have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. Notice to play the C major scale, we have to move beyond our five finger position. Because if I start playing the scale, by the time I get up to my pinky, I've already run out of fingers and I can't go any higher. So in order to play the scale, I'm going to strategically shift after I play my third note. So I'll play C, D, E, and then I'm going to shift my thumb up to the F, the fourth note in the scale, and finish the scale in this position. Again, that will look like this. Shift. When we go back down, it's the same fingering. We're going to start with our pinky and descend. And after we get down to our thumb, we're going to shift down and put our third finger on the E. Just like that. So the last three notes are played with our third, second, and thumb. Again, that looks like this. Let's try playing the scale up and down. Let's try playing the scale with the staccato articulation. Let's play the scale with a legato articulation. And let's play in our normal detached articulation. Another way you can leave our five finger position is by playing in C open position. You probably remember from our last lesson that a C major chord is played just like this. You, in our five finger position, you have C played with your thumb, you have your middle note E, which is played with your middle finger, and G, which is played by your pinky. So that's your first, third, and fifth, and that's how you play a C major chord. We can alter the chord by playing it with our thumb, our second finger, and our third finger, and now we're playing it just like this. If we add the pinky, this is C open position. Let's try playing an arpeggio up and down in C open position. Let's try it staccato, legato, detached. All of this will really come in handy as we segue to our repertoire piece, the can-can. Just like the C major scale, you'll notice that if I try to stay in my five finger position, I'm going to quickly run out of fingers and not be able to move to any notes higher than G. So notice as I play the first phrase um, that my hand will shift up. Mm -hmm. 
there are actually two shifts going on, because once I shift up, I need to shift back down in order to hit my C later in the melody. I can strategically place the shift on the two staccato notes that you hear. For instance, you'll hear me play two staccato notes, and on the second note, I'm going to substitute my ring finger for where my pinky was playing, the G. Just like this. Notice now that my hand is shifted up by one key, I'm going to have trouble getting back down to the C. So watch how I accomplish that by waiting for the second uh, series of staccato notes in which I'm going to shift my hand back down so I can reach the C at the end of the phrase. Just like this. So watch carefully for both of the shifts, both of which happen on the staccato notes. Shift up, shift down. The fun part of the song, of course, is our descending scale run that we get to do between the two phrases. That's going to look like this. You're going to start by playing an octave, and then you're going to descend down the C major scale using the same fingerings we talked about earlier. After the descending scale run, the second phrase is going to repeat a lot of the same musical material. In fact, it sounds exactly the same until the last few notes. Notice the last few notes can be played in our five finger position. The left hand only uses two chords in this song, C major and G major. So let's quickly review where those are. You're going to find your indent or your rhinestone. That's your C bass. Right behind it is your C major button. Right above that we have the G bass and the G major chord. Here's what the progression looks like for the can-can. C, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, C, G, C. In a march feel, it'll sound like this. We've also talked about how you can alternate your bass and your chords to create an even more interesting accompaniment. That will sound like this. A new accompaniment that I would like to show you today is playing your C bass and your C chord back and forth, but twice as fast, and that's going to sound like this. Thanks for watching.